Hello, I'm Jason Paul, and welcome to the Soul Seek podcast. Now, in this episode, prepare to have your mind blown. In this mind bending episode, we dive headfirst into a world where the boundaries of science, consciousness, and reality blur into an awe inspiring spectacle. Now, imagine this teleporting money into the heart of a police custody cell, witnessing a tortoise beat a man in a race, projecting images from your mind onto camera film, or teleporting a GPS device literally hundreds of miles away. All of this achieved solely through the power of the mind. Now, in this episode, I speak with Cambridge scientist, Dr. Simon Duran. He's the founder and the CEO of Metacomputics Lab. This episode delves deep into the secrets of a post-materialistic paradigm that unifies consciousness, mind and matter. Dr. Duran, a true pioneer in his field, has dedicated his life's work to researching paranormal phenomena and exploring the uncharted territories of the mind. Now, Dr. Duran introduces his groundbreaking hypothesis known as platonic computation, challenging everything we thought we knew about reality. With a wealth of experiences in material science and a deep-seated interest in the paranormal, he has forged a path that bridges the gaps between the mystical and the scientific. Now, Metacomputics Labs isn't just about theory. They're on the forefront of developing post-materialism technologies that could change the way we perceive the world. Dr. Simon Duran's journey from his roots in China to obtaining a PhD in material science from the prestigious Cambridge University really does bring a unique perspective to this captivating episode. His deep-seated interest in paranormal research and past involvement as the Vice President of the Chinese Parapsychology Association provide the perfect backdrop for an exploration of the extraordinary. Now, if you've ever wondered how the power of the mind can reshape the world as we know it, this episode is your portal to a mind-bending adventure. Prepare to be amazed, inspired and left questioning the very fabric of reality itself. I hope you enjoy. So, Simon, thank you so much for joining me on the Soul Seek podcast. Oh, thank you for having me, Jason. It's my pleasure to be with you today. Now, in your introduction, it was a mouthful. And I'll be honest, Simon, I had to record it at least a few times over because there was a lot of big words in there. But I'm all about keeping it as simple as possible on um, the Soul Seek. So tell my guests about you, your journey and what it is that you specialize in. Okay. Um, I'm trained as a scientist, actually. Um, I came to this country from China in 1980s mm-hmm. as a student. And uh, I finished my PhD uh, with a, a material science degree uh, in Cambridge. So, uh, so I'm supposed to be a materialist. Uh, You're supposed uh, to be. I'm sensing... I, <laughs> yeah, I have been materialist for many years, actually. Yeah, after my PhD in material science, I worked in industry, uh, doing research development. I worked in a lab, uh, several labs, uh, as a scientist, research scientist. Yeah, and uh, so I was happy to be a materialist science until I come across paranormal phenomena. Mm-hmm. That changed my life. Yeah. And uh, uh, what triggered my interest in paranormal is my personal experience, myself, actually. Uh, I was kind of treated uh, by a kind of a witch doctor in China. Oh, wow. Um, T- tell us go, more I, about this. This is I, I go back to China regularly uh, with my job. And uh, one time, my wisdom tooth plays up, played up, and mm-hmm. it became very painful. Uh, so um, I have to sort of treat it somehow. I consulted with doctor in hospital. They said, oh, it's, uh, it's quite complicated. Uh, you, uh, we need to give you a general anesthetic. Yeah. Uh, I thought, oh, well, this is quite bigger than I expected. Yeah. Now a friend of mine uh, just told me, oh, why don't you go to this place? 
and he's doing a fantastic job uh, taking tools out. So uh, out of curiosity, I went to this place. It's uh, in the suburb of Beijing. And uh, uh, I thought I'd have a look, see what's it like there. But when I go there, the, the wall is full of photos, full of pictures uh, of the, this dentist with celebrities, uh, with politicians, even including the um, a member of Politburo of Chinese Communist Party. Uh, they, they, they all went there for their tools taken out. So I, I thought, oh, this is... This well, is was this a regular dentist at this point? Or? Regular. Well, it's it's not. Uh, I mean, it's not a mainstream regular yes. dentist, but he does it all the time. He's got the clinic, uh, dentist clinic himself. So he's specialized uh, to take tooth out. <laughs> and, uh, so what he did is very simple. I just use a pair of tweezers to take my wisdom tooth out. Without any effort, yeah, and um, I, I thought a big bit, little bit of com- uncomfortable, but uh, it's nothing so very painful. Um, he didn't use any uh, anesthetic injection. He didn't use any uh, cloud injection, cloud uh, blood clouding injection. So, well, I could just say, Simon, I just had the, a few months ago four wisdom teeth out, and it is excruciating. So, how did he do that? Do you know? And what uh, what was his? Yeah, yeah. Uh, he actually took my two wisdom teeth out. Uh, he said, "Oh, this one is okay at the moment, but it may play up later. So, let me just take it out as well." So, and uh, effortlessly. Then, then we went to lunch together. And uh, so during lunch, I asked him what happened to me. What, what the hell did you do to me? <laughs> he said, oh, well, I use a mantra. It's a five-syllable mantra, which I learned from my master. And I use that mantra uh to actually to do the job, <laughs> so the the, the the tea is basically loosened up, uh, so I, I can just take them out effortlessly. <laughs> I I still don't know what he's telling me the truth, but he's doing that day in day out daily, and uh, so he's not. I mean, what he does works. Yeah, well, the reason behind it triggered my interest. Yeah, because uh, I'm trained as a material scientist, so I couldn't understand how this could happen. Yes. This this kind of triggered my curiosity into paranormal. And since then, I kind of get into a rabbit hole a paranormal phenomena, I started to investigate all, all kinds of things. So uh, after that, I, I basically spent the <laughs> majority of my spare time because uh, my, my job bring me back to China regularly. So after my duty, I spent almost all my time investigate various paranormal phenomena I can get. Can you tell China. us about some of the things that really you you invest because obviously this whole world is completely the opposite to everything you studied and qualified in and knew so what was it what were some of the findings that you found through your investigations that made you suddenly go hang on a minute now you know with my curiosity wasn't peaked before it certainly is now yes um yeah since uh my tools taken out uh by a witch doctor uh, that triggered my curiosity, and uh, I spent a lot of time investigating uh, all kinds of paranormal phenomena. Uh, I can categorize this uh, my investigation into uh, several categories. For example, uh, physical, um, chemical, biological, uh, informational, and energetic. Yeah, so. Um, uh 
Well, we can start with the physical. I mean, some people can actually change the property of physical matters. Yeah. And we, we all know the typically the metal bending. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Your regala. Yes, yes, yes. So, yes. so uh, metal bending is, is a typical kind of physical uh, paranormal phenomena uh, where the, 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 somehow the metal becomes a soft. Yeah. So they can just bend it very easily. And in China, we have people who can actually uh, break uh, metal, steel bars. I mean, construction bars. They can simply just break it apart. Yeah. Because I studied material science. I actually, how are they doing that? How would, uh, for your investigation, how is someone bending a metal bar of that size and structure? Yeah. They, they seem to can do it effortlessly. I mean, it's it's not by physical force. How are they it's doing something that? else? Yeah, they they can just take that bar. They can just pull apart. Yeah, and the the, the metal normally, if we elongate the metal, the metal becomes knacking. Yeah, at the breaking point. Whereas in this case, there's no knacking. It just just clear cut. Yeah. And we actually investigate, we, we examined the, the, the fracture surface. Yeah. There is no, uh, string, no green elongation in the microstructure. So it's, it's a different from the normal breaking process. Do you know how the person has done it? Uh, how have that, for your, uh, investigations, did you come to a conclusion as to how? the individual broke the bar? It's by psychic force. Yeah. It's not by physical force. Yeah. So also, they can, some people, they can try and teleport uh, objects. Yeah. So they can move objects in space, uh, not by, I mean, not by normal transport. They can teleport stuff. Yeah. We actually did the experiment where people can teleport the GPS navigator. Yeah. So we can track where the devices has gone. Yeah. Wow. It, it, it can go hundreds of miles away. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. Just by man, mind power. Yeah. So the, the people doing these ex experiments and absolute feats of the almost what seems well it does seem impossible i don't know how yeah, someone yeah. To, yeah did they explain to you what they were doing within their mind in order to do this oh they, they just tell me that they use their mind use their mind power to move it yeah just just, just the mind power to move it yeah and one guy we worked with he can teleport money banknotes I think we're all like a bit of that side, but I'm, I'm not gonna. <laughs> yes, yes, yeah. One time, did he tell you his secrets? <laughs> In this case, he tells me uh, uh, his master. He has to help ask his master to help him. Yeah, but but that master is is not a physical master. His spirits, yeah. master. That's right. Yeah, he asked his master to help him to do the treat. And one time we locked him in a room, in a lab. Uh, we, we, we stripped him all out, even the underwear. And we, willingly? Yeah, because we, we, we kind of pay him. Uh, oh, right. We, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I he, see. He makes, he makes money. He makes living by doing this. Yeah, so, so you took him to the laboratory. Yeah. Lock him up. In the room. Yes. And before that, we strip him all out. Yeah, he's, he's naked. Yeah, he yeah. can't get out. Yeah, he has no assistant and no, no props of any kind. And he's in the room. And he managed to get many, uh, many thousands of uh, uh, banknotes. Chinese money, of course. <laughs> uh, yeah. Into and the room he, with him when he... he uh, no. No, he's, he's, he's on his own in the room. 
Yeah. And uh, oh. he, he does it regularly. It's not the only time. I mean, he, he does it regularly. Does he just specialize in money, this man, or the... oh, he can he can he has to teleport all sorts of things, not only money, oh. yeah, statues and sort of things, and uh, sometimes animal. I mean, the fish or eel or snake, yeah. Oh, yeah. So it's not only money, but this time he he so called teleported money. However, there's a sort of a. I think there's a governing principle behind all those phenomena as well, uh, because he said he cannot use the money. So the money he teleported will disappear in a few days. Yeah. So he, he he's not allowed to use it. He's just do, doing it in order to prove that it's possible. Yeah. Yeah, he, he does it to make money because we have to pay him. He's he's kind of uh, people think he's a magician. He's a the stage magician, which is reasonable speculation because the stage magicians can do this kind of thing. So he kind of performs as a stage magician. So we we pay him to do this. Yeah, no, however. I... However, we investigate him thoroughly. Uh, in our team, I mean, I'm involved in the uh, paranormal research circle in China. Yeah. And one of our colleagues is a magician, is uh, actually a stage magician. He teaches stage magic. Mm-hmm. He's a part of our team to invest the paranormal phenomena. So he knows what is stage magic, what is not. And uh, so he can advise us, oh, this is not stage magic, because it's, it's not. Uh, <laughs> this is the condition is different. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. yeah. And, 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 and another case of uh, teleportation is that I, uh, this guy is also makes money by betting with people. And uh, he's got the tortoise, poetess, the animal, yeah? Yes. The, the betting is actually to race with his tortoise. Uh, see how, how fast we can uh, sort of uh, overtake his tortoise. And which one of you, tortoise or yourself, reach the destination first in a field? Yeah. It's probably 50... 15 yeah. way that's the destination yeah you start to race with the tortoise say who reached the destination first yeah yes yeah uh you let the t- tortoise go first yeah before that, you... that seems like a fair starting point um yeah yeah fair starting point. Yes. <laughs> yeah and uh you you sign your name on the piece of paper yes you stick that paper on the back of the tortoise, yeah. Yes. And you, uh, the, the, the this guy will let his tortoise run, uh, start clawing forward. How much of a head start are you giving him? Oh, probably ten meters or something. Oh, so not much of an advantage. No, no, no. Yeah. <laughs> so, so you, of course, when you start to walk, yeah, you soon overtake the tortoise, yeah. And the tortoise will be behind you. Uh, but when you get to the destination, you will find the tortoise is already there in the destination. Yeah. Crazy. With your signature on his back. I could definitely understand, Simon, why um, you've now committed your life's work to this. Because if you see something like this... That, one thing that you seem to be quite very casual about here is it's happened. You don't understand how it's happened psychically. Mm. Yeah. And that uh, obviously is piquing your interest more, but don't you want to understand how it's... Of course. Yeah. Of course, because it, it has been bothering me uh, for many years. Yeah. I, I'm a curious person. I, I'm very curious even when I was a child. And that curiosity usually 
kind of faded away when you become an adult. But it didn't happen to me. Yes. I mean, curiosity has increased all the time. And with this kind of encounters, it just bothered me. It's like intellectual uh, itch, yeah? Yes. I need to scratch it somehow. And uh, so I, I spent many years trying to figure out how this could happen. What's the mechanism this could happen? Have and, you managed uh, to get any closer to solving that? Yeah, now I have a theory. I have a model to explain this. So at least intellectually, I can understand how this can happen. With my model, I can explain all the uh, paranormal phenomena with no exception. Even even with kind of a very strange phenomena also, uh, I encountered a lot, which is the photography. Thought photography. Yeah, people can project their uh, mental image, the image in, in their mind into a camera. Yeah, sometimes wow. they, they, they can use polarized fuel, yeah? And that polarized fuel will get exposed with their mind. Whatever image they have in their mind, they can project that image. Onto into the camera, into the film. Nowadays, on mobile phone. Wow. Yeah. So that kind of thing is is very bothering me. Uh, try to understand it. So it took took me many years uh, to develop this model. And now I can understand all this can happen because we need to re some kind of review our world view. Yeah. Are, are you still with me? Yes, yes. I'm, oh, I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm intently listening. Yeah. Okay. So, I, yeah, in order to understand the paranormal, we have to give up the materialist point of view. Okay. Go into spirituality, go into the realm of non-material, non-physical. Yeah, and uh, my model is actually based on the simulation hypothesis. Simulation hypothesis is based on the uh, assumption that the universe is a matrix. Yeah, we are actually living in a matrix. Mm. Behind the matrix is the code, basically. Yeah, it's a string of zeros, ones. Okay, therefore, uh, if you can get behind the reality, i.e. behind the matrix, go into the machine which produced this matrix, then you can manipulate the codes. Yeah, if you are successful in manipulating the codes, and you can you can change the reality. Because the reality is basically like a virtual reality. Yeah. But the machine, the computer who which output this reality is so advanced. Therefore, it, it produces such a real, real reality which uh, we, we cannot actually reproduce with the, our physical computer. Therefore, my model suggests that there is a, a non-physical computer which is in the spiritual realm. I call it platonic computer. So that non-physical, transcendental computer is responsible for this matrix. Yeah. For some people, if they can manage to get out of this matrix into the machine, they can gather data. So, for example, some people can do a very accurate fortune telling, yeah? I think that's because they can get into the database, they can uh, they can sort of gather the relevant data, they can use the machine to run a simulation, which will give their indication what the future is like. Yeah. Of course, 
once they get into the database, they know what the past is. So some psychic people can tell you all about yourself, including your past, uh, very accurately, and as well as the future. Yeah. So uh, basically, the, the, the psychic phenomena can be explained by access to the database. Therefore, they can gather information of the past, the present, the future, and also to manipulate the data. If they can manipulate the data, and the external reality changes. So that's how I can uh, explain it now. I think that you, Simon, have actually explained that very well because it, it, that is a beyond complicated thing to even try to simplify. Hmm. Do, do you, in your view, do you think that life is eternal? Uh, this uh, physical life is not eternal. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But our true self never dies. Yeah. Our true self is like a player. Yeah. In a, in a computer game, you, you have a player, you mm-hmm. have an avatar. Yeah. This physical body is basically an avatar. Yes. The player is not on this level. It's outside this matrix, actually. Players is already outside of this matrix. Yeah. At least outside this layer of matrix. Yeah. In my model, the, the cosmos is actually a multi layered parallel universe. It's a multiverse with many layer parallel universes. So the now of, above our physical universe, mm-hmm. there's another level above it. And there's another level above that level. So there's many levels. Yeah. Each level plays the level below as a computer game. It's like our physical level. We play a computer game using a, a physical computer. Yeah. Yes. At the level above us, they have a non physical computer. That non-physical computer produces this physical reality, and the players at this level, uh, basically, uh, yeah, the player at the other level above us play this level as an avatar. Mm. Yeah, so we actually exist at all levels. Our true self exists at all levels. It's like a uh, nested Russian dolls. Right. Okay. That's a good analogy. Yeah. So if we lose this body, it's like losing one layer, one outer layer of Russian doll. The inner layer is still intact, uh, which sits on, a, on another level. So our true self is actually uh, never dies. Yeah. Although we change this body, it's like changing avatar. In, in, in a game, yeah. One avatar goes, uh, we can choose another avatar to play another different game. What, what, what do you hope that your research achieves on, on a wider scale? Because th- mm-hmm. this is all absolutely deeply fascinating, but what, what do you feel is what you're stri- where where are you striving to get to with this? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, my initially uh, uh, objective is actually to quench my uh, curiosity, mm-hmm. to scratch my intellectual edge. Yeah. So I need to have an explanation of all the phenomena beyond the physical phenomena. Yeah. So the physical phenomena is only a subset of all phenomena in the universe. Mm. Yeah. Sometimes we treat physical phenomena as the real phenomena and other phenomena uh, as an illusion, um, non real. Mm. I think that's not true. Yeah. Physical phenomena is only a small subset of all phenomena in the universe. Once we understand all phenomena, 
we can understand the physical phenomena even better. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So uh, by having a, another different model, we can explain paranormal as well as physical even better. So, so it's it's advancement of science also. Science so far only restricts itself on the physical phenomena. Yeah. Now with this new model, we actually expand the physics beyond physical. So that's uh, quite a big uh, achievement. <laughs> mm. Successful. Yeah. And, and also, we have a better understanding of the universe. As I said, if we can model the universe as a matrix, and also if we can understand ourselves as a nested Russian doll, then we have less fear. Yeah. Mm. There's so yeah. much fear in this life. Yeah. People fear death. People are not sure what's happening after death. Yes. And yeah, we encounter all kinds of difficulties, challenges, even in this lifetime, before we die. We suffer from fear. Yeah. Mm. But if we have a different worldview, we can just simply treat this as a game. Yeah. If it's a game, then we don't have to take it seriously. Mm. Take it seriously as a good player. Yeah. <laughs> but we can also let go. Yeah. We can also understand, oh, even I fail in this task. It's okay. It's just experience. It's like a playing a game. Sometimes you die, sometimes you get defeated. Mm. But that's not a big deal. We can carry on to another round of game. Yeah. So the life becomes more joyful. Yeah. Have, have you found that as a result of your research, you have tried to develop your own psychic um, powers? Have you been trying to develop those yourself to put into practice what you've seen others do? I think we are here to play different roles, mm -hmm. different purpose here in the life. I see myself... Uh, as a researcher, as an investigator, yeah, and I, um, it's different. The rules cannot be mixed. Yes, yes. And uh, if I sort of uh, focus my attention to become a psychic, I have to let go all, lo almost all of my curiosity, mm. my intellectual power. Yes. So, it doesn't kind. It doesn't go together. Actually, you can be one or the other. It's like water and oil, isn't it? The two are yeah. very opposing world views. That's right. That's right. I I mind. I find myself. My I have a very active mind, logical mind, analytical mind, which actually prevent me uh, to be a psychic. Yeah, to be a psychic, you, you need to let go all sorts of things. Yeah including your thoughts, feelings, and you need to empty your mind. Yeah. So to ascend to more, from one level to the other level, basically you need to get rid of all sorts of programs. Yeah. Mm. It's like a... Like yeah. experience, would you describe those as experiences and perhaps past traumas to be an empty vessel? Yes, that's right. Yeah. So you need to be an empty vessel. Actually, if you are empty vessel, you're ascended to another another level. Mm. Yeah. Whereas for myself, I, I'm quite sort of happy to do my research. Even my mind cannot be uh, still. Uh, I cannot put down a lot of <laughs> curiosity thoughts. And uh, I, I'm just quite happy to do this role whereas other people they are not interested in investigating they can just do it themselves do you think that the reason why we as a society focus on researching the material world is if we start researching the non-material world then that goes against the grain of money 
and it money being material do you think that again it's two opposing views when it comes to research uh i think in, in research most researchers of course they, they focus on the material world yeah and I, I think that's because they are here to play the material game uh-huh. it's nothing wrong with that yeah I think most people here actually uh, to try to experience ignorance. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Or although at other levels they exist, they understand everything, they have chosen to experience ignorance. So they choose to uh, experience this prison this matrix in material world. Yeah. Mm. And uh, so that's what they've chosen. Therefore, they are not interested in other realms. They only play this material game. Although it's hard, it's challenging, it's full of suffering, (laughs) full of happiness, but that's what they are here for. Yeah. Therefore, I think... Material science is still a dominant uh, mainstream uh, science, whereas a minority of people, or increasingly more people, are interested in uh, realms beyond the material. Uh, for example, you and me. Mm. And, and many of your audience will be interested in uh, material world, uh, beyond the material world. Therefore, those kind of people will start to to think what's beyond the material. And what I'm doing is actually to provide a scientific model which is beyond physical science. It's a non-physical science. It's transcendental science, which provide a, a kind of route map to understand what is beyond the material and how this matrix is constructed. So if you want to get out of the matrix, you need to understand how this matrix is constructed. So my model provides a description of this matrix for those people who are ready to escape the matrix, to find out where they are in the matrix and what to do next, where to go next if they decided they want to get out. So I'm sure you're going to have some people that really do uh, want to find out about how to get out of the Matrix. Um, (laughs) On that note, if people want to find out more about you and they want to find out about how to look into your research and perhaps take those steps out of the Matrix, where can they go to? Yes, I have a website called the Matter Computer. Uh, metacomputics.com we'll put it in the show notes uh so people can find it there yeah um simon this has been the most fascinating conversation thank you for sharing all of your experience with us um uh, when i came on to this episode i'll be honest with you i really didn't know what to expect um but it's been delightful and really interesting so thank you thank you again for having me a big thank you for joining me on another enlightening episode of Soul Sync. For more spiritual insights, free meditation downloads, thoughts, my personal book recommendations, and of course, the latest updates about Soul Sync, subscribe to my newsletter. Just go to jasonpaulmedium.com. Just head straight to the bottom of the page and sign up to stay connected with the soulful community I'm building. I now have a Facebook page where you can join our wonderful community, hear their stories, get involved in the conversation and get off podcast video content from me about the general day-to-day goings on in my life. If you'd like to see that, just go to Soul Sync by Jason Paul on Facebook. Now, if you're listening to this podcast, if you can, it would mean the world to me if you could spare a moment to leave a review on wherever you listen to your podcast. Firstly, it's great to see your feedback. And secondly, it helps others to find Soul Sync more easily. If you have suggestions for future episodes, or perhaps there's a guest you'd love to see featured, 
or you might have a story to share with our wonderful audience, or you might like to be a guest, simply email me at hello at jasonpaulmedium.com. Your stories and ideas are the heartbeat of SoulSync and your input is invaluable in shaping the soulful conversations I bring to you. I'm Jason Paul. This is SoulSync. Until next time, goodbye.